Welcome to episode 54 of the Cohesive Home podcast. Have you ever gone through a period in your life where things just seem really off? either with yourself or with your family. And like maybe you can't really put a finger on it, but just the vibe of your family, the rhythm just feels a little bit different. So today, Melissa and I are going to be talking about a concept called soul fever that I learned about when I did my Simplicity Parenting Family Coach training. And I know nothing about it. (laughs) So... (laughs) So today, Kate is going to be sharing this concept with all of us, including me. And so I kind of came up in our conversation um, last week, I believe. I was having a bit of a a moment. (laughs) I was having a week. And I just, you know, I was stressed and, you know, and there's so much to be thankful for. But sometimes life can just get a little overwhelming. And I mentioned that to Kate and she goes, Oh, that's soul fever. And I'm like, what? (laughs) That sounds weird. (laughs) And she's like, no, no, really. That's like a thing. And so I told her, I said, just hold, hold on to that because I, I want you to tell me, but I want to do it on the podcast. So Kate, why don't you just dive into what that is, the, the theory behind it, the, the just all the information you know that kind of constitutes that that word or that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've read the book Simplicity Parenting, which is one of my favorites, um, this is a concept that's mentioned in it. Now, soul fever typically refers to the child. So every child has their equilibrium or their normal state of being and certain events um, can pull them out of their normal. So you think about a child who um, maybe is normally really tidy, but something happens at school. Maybe they're really stressed about an exam or they've been getting bullied. Their natural tendency to be tidy might start to manifest as, as more of like an obsessive compulsive. We all have this spectrum in our personalities. And when we are thriving, when we are not overwhelmed and not overscheduled, then we are most likely to be at our equilibrium. So we want that for our kids. We want that for our family home because, um, you know, we all get affected by how one another is feeling. So when Melissa told me that they were just completely overwhelmed, she'd recently gotten back from a trip and everything, right? Everything was like piling up. Yeah, yeah. That that was what triggered it. Was I went on a sh- very short trip to go see my brother and sister in law and my nephew out in California, and it literally just kind of like I got back and I I felt just discombobulated. <laughs> That's like the only word I can think of right now. Like I just was. Uh, not prepared for the week. I was overwhelmed with all the things on my to-do list. I didn't feel present. It was just a very, like, it It was literally like what you were saying about, you know, something at school happening with the kid. It was that thing that happened that kind of triggered just this um, complete stressful, like, just overload. Yeah. And I mean, that happens to all of us and it's, it's really is unavoidable. Um, but you know, there's definitely things that we can do to, to try and keep that to a minimum. So how do you deal with soul fever, whether that's in your children or it's you as an adult? Well, it's kind of similar to if a child is sick, right? When my kid is sick, like say they have a normal fever, what do you do? What do you do, Melissa? Well, it depends on how (laughs) high the fever is. No, um, I mean, they they rest, you know, they're, they're restful. Give them a cold rag and just make them stay still. I mean, they're not going to be running around the house, right? So yeah, quiet, stillness. 
Yeah. So it's the same principles as that, you know, we, if a child is experiencing soul fever, um, you know, and you know, I mean, you know, your kids, you can tell like they come home from school and something is up, right? You're like, what happened today? Nothing. No, really, like what happened, you know, and you like, yeah, you dig and you dig and you try and figure out and you maybe might not even get a full answer, but you just know in your heart something is off, right? So it's kind of the same thing. You pull back from the activities and the overwhelm. Maybe you even keep them home from school for a day and just let them feel safe at home and unwind from all of that exterior pressure and overwhelm. Yeah, that's, and it's funny you say that, like, I've done that with the kids this year, actually, just let, you know, them stay home if they just take a day, you know, and then uh, inevitably I get a note from one of Berkeley's teachers. She's just missing so many days. And I'm like, well, half of those she couldn't help. Okay. She was, she was legitimately sick. She had the flu. (laughs) The other half, I'm like, she had soul fever. <laughs> right? You just like write that back. It's a thing. I promise. <laughs> Get off my back. Yeah, oh, no man. Kidding. No, but that's, yeah, that's good. All right. So what, how would you, because obviously the soul fever thing that's, that has been really structured more towards a child. So how would you structure that for an adult? You know, because we're talking about soul fever for us, which is not a concept. I don't think that they, that anyone's really touched on. And so when that shifts to us, how do we, how do we cope? How do Mm -hmm. we deal with that? Well, I think that, you know, you can look at your schedule and you can see what's absolutely necessary. Like the bare minimum of responsibilities, activities that you have to continue to uphold, but then everything else is up for grabs as in like, no, I cannot go to book club. No, I am not able to volunteer at my child's school this week. Sorry. Um, you know, I'm going to have to opt out of this social obligation or whatever it is. You may not be able to stay home from your job um, because, you know, let, let's be realistic. Like life still has to go on. But um, right. if you are experiencing soul fever, let go of as much as you can and then find ways to rest and recharge. And that's really different for everyone of what fills your cup. Yeah. I've noticed that for me, like, how did, I mean, once you kind of told me about the concept, but I, you know, and obviously we didn't dig deep into it, but I knew enough to say, okay, well, I need to just like focus. I mean, I really didn't. I mean, even with cohesive home and stuff, I mean, I didn't check my email for like, I would like look at it and then I didn't have anybody back <laughs> right. for that whole yeah. week. I just was oh, like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to but those. But it's all good because I, you're back. I love you. Yeah. I wanted you to, to <laughs> get back it. in the swing of things. <laughs> well, and come on, you know, right. like if you try and push yourself when you're in one of those like brief little seasons where you're just like, I'm done, I'm done with everything. And then you try to keep pushing. It yeah. just makes it worse like that. It never improves. Right. Right. But if you take a step back and you kind of recharge, it, it definitely gets better. Yeah. That's, um, and that's even, I I feel like it's still, I'm still dealing with it just a little bit, even this Uh week. Um, I I got a much better grasp on things, but it was having to, how I kind of deal with it is I, I make a mental list of all the things I need to do. And I just focus on one thing, the things that I have to do, right. Obviously like I get rid of all the the unnecessaries. I feel like this week I've, I've been able to catch my breath more and to, um, kind of, you know, quiet down. And it's funny, I'm an extrovert, but I'm also, I'm like an extroverted introvert. I have realized over the past year that I love being around good friends. I love good conversation but not too much, right? It's like I can take a couple hours, even an, an evening with, with people that I know. Um, it, and if it's, but it's, if it's a room of people I don't know, then, oh my gosh, I like, give me a few hours and I'm done. Like I got to go like be quiet. But if it's people I know that can be recharging for me, but it still wears me out sometimes. And now like I enjoy being home. Like, and I'm, in fact, I'm looking for like a, a part-time job from home because I don't want to go somewhere else and like be overwhelmed, you know? So it's, I think it's also, 
understanding your triggers and understanding like where to not put yourself and so that soul fever doesn't come back continually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that I get overwhelmed super fast if I have too much on my schedule. And, and so I have to be really careful who I say yes to, um, because I tend to have that people pleasing where I, you know, I don't want to let people down. Like if someone asks me to hang out, especially if it involves kids and I'm like, oh, but the kids really need a play date and I should go. But, but it's one of those days where like I am in my sweatpants and there's dishes and guess what? I just want to watch a movie with my kids. Like I don't want to go anywhere. Um, And so recognizing, recognizing that in yourself and not being afraid to tell people, no, I'm sorry, it's not going to work this week. Yeah, I don't want to brush my teeth, so I'm <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just kidding. I do brush my teeth. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. No, I remember, yeah. especially when babies are little, like, oh, man. Oh, man. oh yeah. yeah. I stayed home all the time. Like, well, and sometimes, and on the flip side, sometimes when you have, like, little babies, you're like, get me out of the house. I am going bonkers and yeah, being stuck true. in here. with. Yeah. So, like, it's obviously, like, you have to know what's going to help you in this particular situation, what's going to make you feel better. But I know like, again, when I'm going through my own soul fever, I start going to bed at like eight 30 or nine every night, even if I have stuff to do, even if the sink is full of dirty dishes and I didn't respond to all the emails that I needed to, I've learned that if I don't prioritize my rest and well being, it just, it just gets worse. So sleep for me is like the number one thing that I yes. turn to. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. I've I feel guilty though sometimes if I'm home and I'm like I need to just take a little nap because I, I have to have that nap. Like and I'm not a napper, but every once in a while I'm like, "Oh man, my body hurts. I need more sleep." You know, if we'd had a late night or something. And I'm always like, "Babe, I, I took a nap today." <laughs> like <laughs> like uh, I'm like, you know, repenting. <laughs> like I'm so sorry. I He's like, so bad. "I'm so glad you did." He's like, "That's great. I'm glad. That's good for you." It's so funny. So don't feel guilty for also taking care of yourself. Could listening make you a better parent, a better leader, even a better person? Could listening inspire you to start something new? There's never been a better time to start listening on Audible. With Audible, you get access to an amazing selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, motivation, mysteries, thrillers, memoirs, and more. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now with Audible Originals, the selection has gotten even more custom with content made for members. And if all of this talk about soul fever in our episode has made you want to read the book Simplicity Parenting, you can now listen to it on Audible. And Simplicity Parenting could be one of your three titles that you get to choose every month. You get one audiobook and two Audible Originals that you can't hear anywhere else. You can listen on any device, anytime, anywhere. It's great for busy mamas like us. You can also enjoy audiobook exchanges, rollover credits, and an audiobook library that you get to keep forever, even if you cancel. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash cohesive home or by texting cohesive home to 500 500. So head there now, get Simplicity Parenting, and let us know what you think. Go to audible.com slash cohesive home to sign up now. I wanted you to tell our listeners about something that you shared with me the other day, and I think we're going to go more in depth on another podcast about this, Uh but maybe just slightly touch I'm nervous. Touch. Oh no, it's not bad. It's the thing, the thing, because you just said sleep. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's nothing too private. It's that thing that the that resting meditation yes. stuff that you're doing. Yes. Oh my goodness, I'm like, you guys. Super, dude. You're like, I don't have to. I don't have to do anything but lay there. What? I, I'm like <laughs> all them. over this. Tell them now. Like, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I. I'm a, I know. So okay. Little preface. I. I took the kids to the library the other day. So we are, um, my girls are enrolled in a charter school here in Oklahoma that allows them to homeschool. 
And so they do some of their work on the computer, which I, I'm so like tech phobic. That was really hard for me to be okay with. And I'm, I'm still not a hundred percent okay with it, but for this season of life that we're in, it's great that I don't have to come up with, um, homeschooling lesson plans. So Um, They had to get some testing done, and we met their teacher at the public library. I had my little guy for like three hours was just like running wildly all over the library, and I'm like trying to keep up with him. And and so we kind of dipped into the nonfiction section, which is my favorite because I love I love research and I love it's like your candy oh my gosh I know I'm like I typically stay very far away like a dick I have to like. (laughs) you know, ration that out. Like I have to be like, okay, no, Kate, you need to read some fiction and give your brain a rest. Um, yeah, seriously. But I, I don't know. I was just, do you ever like, you're just walking around and like maybe at a bookstore or at a library and a title just like catches your eye. Like, you don't know why, but you just, you gravitate toward it. And so I just plucked this book off the shelf and maybe it was the title because the title is called Daring to Rest. And I was like, ooh, like, dare me. Yes, please. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who's who's going to make this a game? I'll do it. I'm in. I'm in. Um, so I picked up the book. It's by a woman named Karen Brody. And uh, we can put a link in the show notes for sure. But it's based on uh, Yoga Nidra. N-I-D-R-A. Mm-hmm. Nidra. I don't know. One of those two. I think it's, I think it's Nidra. I think it's okay. Nidra. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it, if you've ever done a yoga class, and you know that last like five to ten minutes at the end where they they have you lay on the floor and relax your body and they cover you up with blankets. Sh- <laughs> it's like the best part. Shavasana. Shavasana. <laughs> yeah. It's oh my gosh, so good, the so best. good. So that's this, but for like fifteen to forty minutes. So much longer. Oh, it's like a guided. I don't want to say meditation, but kind of. And so the woman who wrote the book, um, she walks you through it. It's not complicated. And then she has free um, downloads. And so I just downloaded it to my phone. I put my headphones on, and I've started doing this during nap time and before bed. Oh, my gosh. It is so good. I, I don't, I mean, getting to rest and relax it's been so renewing. Yeah. I, I haven't even talked to you about it, Melissa, but like the like three or four days I've been doing it, I already feel so much calmer the rest of my day. That's been crazy. Yeah. Well, and even last night you were like at a pretty early hour, you're like, I'm going to do my yoga need, nidra, 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 or whatever, <laughs> whatever. that thing. <laughs> that and thing. <laughs> I'm going to do that sleeping thing and then I'm going to go to bed. And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> like no. you never do that. Like I you're know. never like I'm piecing out before you. That's a good point. <laughs> so I, yes. the fact that it's like spurring you to actually go to sleep even earlier, I was like, yes, good job. And I'll <laughs> do that. And here's the thing, I'll tell you why. And I was telling Kirk about this the other day too, is I feel like there are so many demands on my time. And there's so many ways yeah. that I'm expected to improve myself. And everything takes action. It takes work. It takes movement. And like, I'm tired. I'm tired of more, 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 right? That's why we were attracted to minimalism in the first place is like, I need less, less of everything. And so to do something that it's a 40 day program and it's, I mean, there's all these health benefits. I'm not, you could go read the book, like, but it's, there's all these studies that have been done and I need this. And for someone to say, all that you have to do is lay down and listen. Like I am all in because mm-hmm. that is something that mm-hmm. I can, I can do. Oh, I love Shavasana. It's like the best after you've like worked your muscles like that. And then you lay on that mat, you're like, yeah, to sleep. Oh. but you know, it's like, I don't, I, it's really hard for me to get to a yoga class anymore. It just, yeah, it's hard. I, oh that gosh, sounds really yeah. bad to say, like, I can't make time, but I just, it just is. And so it's hard. Yeah. It but I could do this at home and Ooh, what I also love about the book is she talks about like if you're a young mom, you know, with little kids, how to squeeze it Mm -hmm. in. And so like during my 22 month old's nap time, I've told the girls, I'm like, I'm laying down with my headphones on. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Like find a book and just chill. And they're usually, they're like pretty good about it mostly. Pretty good about it. Yeah. yeah, But, um, and then when, you know, 
when he wakes up from his nap and I'm waking up from my yoga nidra coma, I actually feel good. I'm like, yeah, I can take on the afternoon. <laughs> yes, you've had that. Oh, For man. sure. So, yeah, we definitely want to dive deeper into that in a different episode. So, stay on the lookout for that because I think I think that's definitely after you've done it a little while I think we definitely yeah. need to go into all the goodness behind that for sure for sure so one thing that I've noticed in the past with my whole family has been you know obviously individuals within the family could have soul fever but sometimes I feel like all of us have it I feel like it's like as a unit we are not you know, in sync, maybe sometimes it is just my husband and I, and we need to like get on the, we always say we need to get on the same page. And if we're not on the same page, then, and that doesn't have to be an argument that that can be just, we're busy and things are going on and we don't feel in sync anymore. And okay, sorry, I said in sync and all of a sudden I got bah, 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 stuck in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, we're not, we're not, um, we're not synced. So, um, but I feel like my children can really feel that, um, when my husband and I aren't. And so we kind of all have this, this fever, right. And we all, um, or maybe we've just moved or maybe we're busy or I don't know. So many things can trigger just not being well. And, oh man, I can't even like, there's almost no words to describe it. I think if you're listening, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's this just undercurrent of instability and un and like restlessness. That's a good word. A a river of restlessness underneath everything. And I never know how to just like calm that other than, you know, just not doing anything. So how would you knowing what you know, how would you tackle when it's the whole family? Yeah, well, um, so I have two thoughts about this. Um, the first one is if you've listened to my solo podcast, Streamlined Motherhood, I've talked about this a few times, but um, it's the idea that our children can kind of pick up on our, our moods um, and how we're feeling. And then they mirror yeah. that in their own behavior. So, um, you know, like say, we used to notice this a lot with our oldest daughter. My husband and I were fighting, okay? Even if we were like hiding the fighting, does that, you know what I mean? Like it's as much as yeah. you can. Spelling um, words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am so A-N-G-R-Y at you, you know. But um, <laughs> but they pick up on that, right? They can, they kids are like, they're so wise and they they have like these little sensors, yeah. um, for how we're all feeling. And so we would notice her behavior would change. It would be like a switch and she would start misbehaving more. And then it was like, Oh, wait a second. Like she's feeling uncomfortable and she's feeling, um, the instability of our home right now because she senses that mom and dad are fighting and no kid enjoys that. Mm-hmm. And that affects, oh, no. it affects the whole family. And so it, like Melissa was saying, it's not even just like if you're fighting, sometimes there is this restlessness you feel like something's not right in your home. And maybe mm-hmm. you can't like really pinpoint it. You can't put a finger on it. I know for us, that's how we felt like the whole last year that we lived in Indiana when we were in our little house, um, something wasn't right. And we just, we couldn't figure it out. It was like, maybe it's just us. Maybe like we just need to get our act together and like deal with it, you know, like, and, and I think that's a common thing in our culture is to say, just deal with it. Like stick those feelings under the surface, pretend that they don't exist. And you need to go on with life because everybody else expects that of you. But we all know that like, eventually you crumble, you're going to crumble under those expectations. And so for us, the way that we dealt with our soul fever as a family, and I'm not recommending this, like, so don't, don't take this as like blanket advice, but we hit the road and we started traveling full time. For us, that was the cure for our soul fever. We were, at the time, we were overwhelmed with having an old house with too many house repairs. That was eating away at us. We had, we were, felt overscheduled. We were overcommitted. My husband was working two jobs. Um, because we'd had some financial instability. And so 
we were getting pulled in every single direction. And for us, the cure was to do something really radical and hit the road. But for your family, it might be something really simple like saying, we're not going to do any extracurriculars for the springtime. And we are going to spend every Saturday at home as a family, you know, playing card games and going for walks and doing really simple activities that help us actually bond instead of feeling pulled apart. Right. Being present. Yeah. I feel like that's another oh, thing too. Huge. I mean, you may be someone like us where we don't have anything going on. Like we have really stripped everything away. Um, my son does gymnastics. Like that's it. My daughter has um, from home, she has dyslexia class like twice a week um, online. That's it. Like we we're home. We don't do anything. And yet we can still feel just that uneasiness. And so, I mean, and that's the other thing. I mean, you can, I don't know, you can have a lot of different opinions about this. um, But for, for me and my family, I know that if we are more present with our kids and we focus on just talking with them and doing things with them, and even if it's watching a movie, but just being available. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like sometimes talking isn't enough. Sometimes you have to actually take an action and figuring out what that action can be can be it can be hard or it can be scary to think of changing up the way that you've always done things as a family. And that's why on this podcast for the last three years, we've talked about being intentional. And so definitely like look back at our archives, um, you know, email us. I also do one-on-one coaching. So if you're feeling stuck, Mm -hmm. Melissa and I are here to help. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yes, we are. (laughs) We have three years of archives for you. (laughs) Oh, actually more like two and a half because we take, we take breaks. (laughs) Um, Which is, you have to be intentional with our time. (laughs) Well, yeah. And I mean, last spring, you remember, Melissa, I had like majorly epic soul fever slash could have possibly been depression but was like undiagnosed <laughs> I don't know I was just a, a baby okay it's true and and I, I mean I think that that's like a good lesson there is like I when I gave birth to my youngest I I knew intuitively that I needed to schedule time to rest and just be and I didn't like I uh, just don't if you were pregnant Promise me, don't do that to yourself. Please learn from my mistakes. Because then when he was around a year, like getting ready to turn one, it's just like my little like house of cards just fell. I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm just done. And the only way out of that was to rest and to get rid of everything, including we, I mean, we didn't record for months and that was because I just, I couldn't do it. But we, we knew that we had to be um, true to the things that we talk about, right? We couldn't just say one thing and then live another way. So we knew that that break was necessary. So it was good. You're good now. I'm all good now. I feel I am. You're, I you're have, real good now. I'm real good. No, I, but I, I've put boundaries in place <laughs> and I've, I've prioritized rest and I've just, yeah, I'm, I'm living in a, a much healthier manner than I used to. So definitely pick up the book, Simplicity Parenting, if if this is appealing to you. There, I mean, each chapter is so good, but, um, you know, there's chapters on decluttering your kids' spaces and, um, you know, paring down your family schedule so that you're not so overwhelmed. Um, one of my favorite chapters is called, I think, don't quote me on this, Filtering Out the Adult World, and, and it's all about, you know, how we can protect our children's innocence and their childhood. So um, I'm sure we'll keep kind of talking about these topics. And I also talk about them some on my, on my own podcast. Well, that is all we have for this week. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already, definitely go check out this week's sponsor. That's audible.com slash cohesive home, or you can text cohesive home to 500 500. We'll see you next time.